All right, let's get right into it. This is a little different. You know, I usually do the videos all produced and cut up with the gifts and all that stuff, but I ain't got time this week because <laughs> life happens and, you know, I got things going on, but I still got time to get this review out. So, I am reviewing Ready to Love Season 6, Episode 7. This is entitled, well, is it Season 5 or Season 6? Because if you look at it on TV, it'll say Season 6. If you pull it up on a web somewhere, it'll say Season 5. <laughs> it's just, they never have it right, man. But anyway, the uh, title of this episode is called The X-Files. And so this episode starts off in the ladies' lounge. Now... The ladies' lounge, you got, it starts with the Kia really explaining um, what happened between her and Eric, like some kind of sexual harassment thing. It's, it's like last season, it was Shiloh and Phil, and this season, <laughs> I mean, they didn't even get to really date that long, but it's the Kia and Eric, so he made some unwanted advantage advances physically from what she says and from what everybody gathers um, but when you hear his side of the story um, even though it's a little different it's not like he was trying to do it on purpose or he wasn't really trying to do it like I don't think he was knowingly making advances on her you know I'm sure it's a situation where there was alcohol involved and you know when you get that liquor in your system <laughs> you just you know you might do things you like to you is everything's fine but to the other person you know so that's I think it's one of them type of situations I mean I don't think she really got too detailed into it but that's what it was so uh Tommy comes in and he tells the ladies, he gives the ladies their marching orders. So this one, he's telling the ladies to, that they got to introduce they next to they ex. Or introduce they ex to they next. So, I don't know. This is one of them things. I mean, I guess they can keep it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, Tommy says that he's going to talk to Eric on his own. And so the women are happy, <laughs> like, yeah, you need to talk to your boy. <laughs> but so we uh, start the dates off. And so Joy, uh, Joy and her ex are meeting Laverne. And they are at Carmine's Italian Restaurant. And for those of you in the DMV, you know that's downtown. It's on 7th Avenue, uh, 7th Street. 7th Street, yeah. Um, close to, uh, you know, before you get to the... Uh, Capital One Center. But anyway, uh, they're at Carmine's Italian, and then they're waiting on Clifton. And so I'm already thinking, like, this ain't going to be good because Clifton is like, he's already got the, uh, <laughs> he's already got the handcuffs on <laughs> Joe, Joy, like he TJ Hooker, you know what I'm saying? But, and waiting for Clifton, Laverne is hating on Clifton <laughs> with the ex. Because the ex and Laverne are getting along really good. And so the ex is just like, I mean, Cliff, uh, Laverne is telling the ex like, yo, you can just forget about Clifton. Just tell her that I'm the right one for her. And so Clifton comes up and right away his energy is just really on some haterish stuff. I mean, he drinking that haterade. He got all the flavors of haterade on him. He is like insecure you know especially that the ex is there like he's looking at the ex the ex is sitting there looking all suave debonair you know he looked like a cool cat and uh you know him and laverne is is chopping it up and they looking like they having fun and then clifton comes in with this just negative energy all around him he's not like he's not feeling this whole meeting and i was surprised coming from clifton because i thought he was one of the real solid you know, he seemed to be mature. He seemed to be a little older than everybody. Uh, he just seemed like a really tight dude. But now I can see like a lot of insecurities coming out of him. You know, um, 
he was like and sin well the ex was insinuating that cliff is a jealous person he's like if you got a jealous bone in your body then you don't want to be with with her and i feel him because joy is a professional singer you know she's always around men she's always around artists you know some of them you know you got tats and and six packs and you know they them r&b singers looking like tank and who else like <laughs> all of them, genuine you name it but you know clifton is a jealous person because you can see you can just see it just coming it's the the jealous vapors is just shooting off of this man and um he's projecting about exes lingering on he's like the reason why he don't like exes and he don't like this situation is because he's like oh yeah if they ex then why they still lingering around they got ulterior motives and i think that's projection because he seemed like he would be that type but anyway moving right along to tommy and eric now uh tommy and eric are talking about what happened and eric says that it wasn't his intention to hurt uh the kia's feelings and he wasn't really trying to disrespect her. It was just like things got out of hand. Uh, they was taking a picture and he was holding her. And he, you know, his hands moved a little all over the place. And she was like, oh, no, nah, I ain't going for that. Like, I'm not the one. And so, you know, things happen. But I was like, dang, is it? He, he just like admitted that he ain't ready to love. And he needs some retrospection or some introspection. And he takes himself out like he self eliminates. I'm like, man, that dude is mature. But it's like, man, you know, did you really have to leave the show? <laughs> I was like, OK, I mean, maybe the kid would have made it hard for him. So, I mean, and maybe that was the only person that he thought he liked. So, yeah, you know, big ups to him, man. He got a lot of, um, you know, he got a lot of talent and he's he's a cook. He's a professional chef. So. He's going to have access to, you know, other women. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal for him. So good luck, my man. And so now we go back to Joy and her ex. So uh, the ex has to now explain to Clifton that him and Joy are nothing more than friends. They were an item one time, but they felt like, you know, they're better off as friends and they've been good friends ever since. And, you know, Clifton is just sounding and he's saying, you know, we just I'm her good friend, you know, I'm, and Clifton just he just sounded really kind of immature. I mean, he even like has some kind of it looks it looks like they kind of going back and forth like they got a disagreement like Clifton and the ex <laughs> got a, a disagreement. So this is putting Laverne in a good spot because Laverne was just chilling, you know, Clifton is is <laughs> I'm like, man. But anyway, Laverne jokes about having the ex pick him over Clifton again. Laverne is just, he's just throwing out the, the uh, you know, the jokes left and right. The ex uh, mentions when, you know, when the date is over, the ex mentions that Cliff has some issues that he needs to work out. He even calls Cliff risky. And I think, you know, I think Joy is... Uh, not paying attention to the red flags because you know we men we good if we if we decide to be a friend that means that we're going to be honest and give you the honest truth as men who know men so she's really like thinking like he's not a risk he's you know i don't think he's a risk and you know the ex is like even though he's your type over laverne He's your type physically, but he's not the right one for you. So I hope she listened. But, you know, she been on Clifton from the from day one. And, you know, that's probably why she's here. She ain't listening. <laughs> but OK, so now we go to Cliff and her ex. So the funny. No, did I say Cliff? I mean, Carmen. So now we go to Carmen and her ex. So Carmen shows up with her ex and they're holding hands i'm like what is this like when's the last i don't know anybody who walks down the street holding their ex's hand unless they back in there like oh we back together like why would you be holding your ex's hand 
walking down the street, going into a establishment. I mean, that's a date. So, but anyway, her ex is really cool. He looks, you know, really sharp, debonair, older gentleman, looks mature. I really wasn't expecting that because Carmen, she just seemed like a, I don't know, she seemed fun and like a freak. So <laughs> I would, I don't know. I just, maybe this guy tamed her one at one time, but I, I would like to know about that relationship. So anyway, they're there to meet Paul and Donovan and Paul is surprised by this guy uh, being her ex and that they're still all at this meeting together. He comes in, he's like, oh, okay, yeah, your friend, oh, your ex, you know, he's, he's like kind of thrown off. And then Donovan shows up, and Donovan is surprised as well. But Donovan, he had a little surprise, but then it was gone. Like, he didn't really, it really didn't trip him up or anything. And then they go to Ace and her ex. So Ace is meeting Laverne and Troy, uh, Tori. Uh, Ace's ex is like the artistic type, you know, he's he's got it, he's got dreads and they they blonde and they you know he got him pulled up. He just looked like an artist. Um, then Laverne shows up. Laverne shows up, gets out of his uh Mercedes SUV, pretty tight. I'm feeling that. Uh he's real cocky and confident. You know, hey, you that's what you should be. And he says he's not the jealous type. Um, Laverne sits down and he's like, you know, he's talking to the ex and Laverne calls all the other men spectators. He's like, oh no, this is, I'm the one for Ace. Like Laverne says, whoever he is, got his eye on, he's the one for that person and nobody else. So his, uh, confidence and swag is on 1000. <laughs> so, but on the other hand, <laughs> opposite of that, we got, Tory coming in. Now he's surprised at the whole meeting. He's surprised to see another dude. He's surprised to see uh, Laverne there. And then when he find out that's her ex, he's like, "Like, why would why would you uh, throw the trash out and then go back and pick it up?" <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he is not the uh, most uh, mature type. I think you know. Um, I know that's a sentiment for a lot of people, but that's something you keep in your head. Like, I don't know. So we go back to Carmen and her ex and Paul and Donovan. The ex asks Paul and Donovan, what are your intentions with Carmen? Paul throws out the marriage card <laughs> right away. He's like, oh, you know, I'd love for her to be my wife, something like that. Donovan sits there cool and collected. He's like, you know. We got to, you know, I'm feeling her, blah, blah, blah. You know, he says he likes her and all that. And the ex says, um, you know, he's telling the guys, so you guys got to handle her being around ballers and millionaires and all that stuff. Can you handle that? Paul <laughs> says, oh, yeah, I'm used to handling that. Like, I'm used to being around uh, women, uh, ballers, you know, women who are ballers and all, and, and all this stuff. And then the ex goes, what do you do? He's like, he says, I'm a software analyst. So I'm like, I thought Paul was going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm an A&R for Warner Electro. You know what I'm saying? I'm around musicians. I'm around singers. I'm around songstress and all this stuff. I mean, he's a no more boring job in the world than a software analyst. <laughs> so anyway, uh go back to ace and her ex <clears throat> the ex asked the guys what do you see in ace uh tori says i see she's real man that was you could have thought something better laverne uh laverne just comes out of left field talking about i got two kids but we gonna still be getting it in <laughs> it's like laverne will you listen <laughs> laverne is just somewhere else He's like, I take my ginseng, I work out, you know, I, I still got energy, you know, it's on and popping and, and everybody's looking at him like, okay. <laughs> and so then the uh, the ex asked both the guys, are you alpha? Because he said that Ace is pretty much alpha. So he's like, what do you guys think? How would that work? If you guys are alpha and she's alpha, how that's going to work? <clears throat> and, um, you know, they, they kind of answer it. 
I can't remember. It, I mean, to be honest, that question didn't really. Troy, Tory said something like we can work together and Laverne. I don't remember what he said, but it was ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, it looks like that whole uh, date went well. But Tory, he keeps trying to overcompensate, but he wasn't trying to overcompensate in this in this situation because he normally throws out the rearranging kidney jokes and that wasn't even happening. He was just thrown off by the whole thing. The ex seems cool though, um, but the ex is like uh, when uh, Ace asked him, who do you think is the right one for me? Uh, her ex says, if you want to be led, you pick Laverne, but if you want to lead, <laughs> you pick Tori. So y'all know what that's about. Tori is not looking good on this episode, I'm telling you. So now we go back to Carmen and her ex. I think um, that whole date went well, actually, with Paul and Donovan. Don't seem like it was too much drama or nothing like that. They all seem like they mature people. Um, the ex likes Paul, but he thinks that he won't be enough to handle her. Uh, he thinks Donovan is her type. And, you know, he thinks... Donovan is the one. He just thinks Paul is a little soft. But that's the first time I ever heard that. I wouldn't think he was soft at all. So anyway, we go to Sabrina and her ex. So uh, she has three. No, she has two dates with three guys. So the first one, she uh, separated Demetrius from everybody. So it's her and her ex and Demetrius. And then the next date is with Donovan and Tori. So as soon as the Demetrius comes in, the X says, okay, I see why. I see the uh, thing, the connection. Because they kind of look alike. Except, you know, her ex got hair and Demetrius is bald. But they dark skin with the beard. Probably the same build or whatever. And then um, uh, Tori. So we go to the date with Tori and Donovan. So... Tori comes in, he sees the ex and Sabrina. He's already with some petty energy. <laughs> He's, I mean, I think he was like that, like ever since that truth of dare, when she kissed Demetrius in front of him, when uh, he thought she was going to come to her to him, when they said, go and kiss the person you got the best connection with. He was just waiting for her to come over there and she went right to <laughs> pass him up and went and kissed Demetrius. Um, so he's been just off ever since. So we got um, Sabrina. She seems uh, put off by, you know, the pettiness that Tori was displaying because he's just making comments. That's just, you know, and his attitude looks like he don't want to be there. He looks like he he don't want to see the ex like he's feeling insecure. You could tell it. Donovan, on the other hand, is just sitting there cool, calm, collected, confident. And Sabrina starts, you know, putting her energy towards him. Uh, I mean, Donovan was surprised at first. But then, like I said, he brushed it off and was like, okay, we're going to do this. Let's get to know everybody. Um, Sabrina is happy that, you know, that uh, Donovan is not showing any weakness, unlike Tori. So... <laughs> Because <laughs> Tori was tripping. So, you know, Sabrina is a small but powerful. <laughs> She's like small in stature, but her personality is powerful. Like, you wouldn't get nothing over on her. She don't She don't look like she takes nothing. Um, I like one of the questions when, when the ex was asking Tori something. And then Tori responded. You know how people say, well, honestly... You know, I hate that because, of course, honestly, I'm not asking you to lie, but that's what the, the ex kind of came up when Tori said, honestly, the ex was like, no, nah, I'm lying. And tell, me to, <laughs> tell me what I'm asking. So anyway, uh, the ex sees that Sabrina really likes Donovan. Um, <clears throat> Donovan said uh, that he choose Sabrina right now. If the show in it, like he choose her. And... You know, Sabrina says, you know, I think your best pick is Donovan because, <laughs> um, well, he likes Donovan and Demetrius. He said, if you want to build with somebody, if you want to build this empire and build a family, whatever, then you need to be with Demetrius. But if you want to have fun <laughs> by blowout, I know that's your type and I know, you know, y'all have fun, but 
I don't know if he's going to be building anything with you, but he'll definitely be a good time for you. So that's how that went. So now we're going to Christina and her ex. So Christina and her ex are meeting Paul and Demetrius. So uh, Paul says like, <laughs> wow, her ex looks really young. Well, no, no, you know, crap. She's young. Um, I don't know where she... I know she had more exes than this because she pulled this ex from high school. Like this is one of her high school uh, <laughs> relationships. So that should tell you something like she's like 30. I'm, maybe she had one or two men, but I'm sure she could have found like somebody that wasn't her. Well, she did say the father of her child, they had a tumultuous thing. So I don't know if she she shouldn't have just <laughs> maybe she shouldn't have participated in this one. Um, but Paul is really surprised. Um, then they meet Demetrius. Uh, Tina really likes Demetrius. She starts warming up to him. Demetrius is treating this like an interview that he practiced over and over with the because uh, <laughs> the ex is asking a question and he's just answering like off the top of his dome. So I don't know. That ex was talking about a story where like when they was dating, they was like high school or whatever, or maybe a little out of high school, but. You know, he was like, she got anger issues <laughs> and she got mad at him. Like he was cheating on her and, and she threw his phone and broke it. And I mean, if you <laughs> with friends like that, who needs enemies? Like he didn't, he didn't help her out. And even Paul said like, Paul was just out of here. He like left this day early. He was like, you know, I, I don't know if I want to deal with this. <laughs> He's like, her ex said everything, but. That she was ready to love. He did not say that at all. So I don't think Paul is going to go for that. And so now we go to the Kia and her ex. And they meet Clifton. Now why is it, everybody's meeting Clifton. But Clifton don't want to meet nobody's ex. He had already explained it. Uh, verbatim. No he explained it. And at nauseum. Like I don't like the idea of a woman having an ex as a friend or exes hanging around. So Clifton got us. He has a stringent. Um, he has uh, requirements. And one of them is that you are not friends with your ex. So, I mean, since everybody breaks up on bad terms. OK, like Clifton, nobody, not everybody breaks up on bad terms. Some people just become friends and they become cool with each other. They realize it didn't work, but whatever. <laughs> so they meet Clifton. Clifton doesn't even shake the ex's hand. He like comes in there trying to like, like size him up a little bit. And the ex is like, this dude, <laughs> you know, um, it, cause Clifton seems a little confrontational. I guess he didn't had it with all the exes. <laughs> He's like, another one? No, nah, I ain't doing it, son. So uh, the ex just asked him, are you ready for marriage? And Clifton, he said he was married twice. Um, I mean, that's, you ain't ready. <laughs> I can't say that. You know, if it don't work after the second time, why should there be a third? I mean, you just, you just, you just asking for, for trouble. I mean, you, if you want to get married for a third time, the first two didn't make it. It's like you got a even less chance of the third one. I mean, that's just that's just statistics about divorce and marriage in the United States. The sec the first one you got a fifty percent chance <laughs> of making it. The uh, the second one you got a sixty percent chance of it not making it, and then the third one you got like seventy five percent chance of it not making it. So. I mean, unless you just the Marian type and you just need you just dependent on a woman. I mean, I don't see why you're there. But uh, Christine and her ex. So they go back. Like I said, this was a high school ex. And he says her anger is an issue. And I told y'all I knew it. Like she seemed like a kind of reformed hood girl. Like I could I could just tell man, she. She's just young. I don't think she's like learned. You know, I don't think she's been. I wouldn't say she's, you know, done things like been around the world, you know, um, you know, 
five star meals, five star restaurants, five star hotels. I don't I I I I can say like on the classier side, I don't see that in her. I see her as more of a normal kind of, you know, neighborhood chick. Um if anger is an issue, she got some she might have some some problems, you know. If he says that and he ain't saying nothing else, yeah, cuz it sounds like they had a tumultuous uh relationship. So, I mean, I mean, the ex even talks about like she can't communicate like she's not a good she's not good at communicating because he he lists the times when when she ghosted him. She stonewalls the conversation. She don't say nothing. She holds grudges. I mean, come on, like she could have really picked some she could have picked a friend. <laughs> Just like say you my ex and say some good stuff about me. Did she not brief him before <laughs> before this whole thing? Um Paul, like I said, Paul is out of there. He left early. Uh, <laughs> he didn't hear that she was ready. So we go back to the, the Kia and her ex. Clifton is hung up on the ex. <laughs> he's trying to make. So now Clifton is really childish. Like he's like, so I'm just going to love up on her. I'm going to kiss her and hold her, you know, grab her, grab her uh, thigh to see if the ex is feeling something. So then, aha, got y'all. I knew y'all was doing something behind my back you know come on clifton like no no secure man is is gonna do that like trying to make the ex uncomfortable or trying to make him jealous by by flirting with her i mean come on man you <laughs> like in your 40s man that is that is not cool uh clifton didn't i mean he just didn't like this ex he didn't like this whole situation he i know he didn't want to do this episode probably <laughs> But no, all the ladies like him. So that's that should have been a bell in his head. Like all the ladies like me. So I ain't got nothing to worry about. Why I'm worrying about an ex. I mean, why am I worried about your past? Everybody has a past. Ain't nobody tripping on him being married for two two times. You know, two time fail marriage. So whatever. <sighs> so uh let's see. We so Christine, we go back to Christina and her ex. Uh, the ex says that Demetrius is too conservative, a.k.a. he got his stuff too much together for you. <laughs> he ain't going to be a good fit because you are not going to be tamed by him, uh, a.k.a. educated lame. It could be anything to where, like, it's a positive for the man, but he knows that she probably from the hood and it's not going to work out. Uh, <laughs> that's my conjecture. And Paul, he says Paul is a better match because Paul looks like he just be chilling. He looks like he down. He, you know, he dresses like, uh, you know, a young man. So she thinks that would be more her speed. So now we get back to the ladies lounge and it's deliberation time. So um, Eric bows out. Tommy tells everybody Eric's gone. The kid is happy. The ladies are like, what the hell? <laughs> so... Okay, so let's just go to who likes who. Joy is still on Clifton. She is hard-headed. She ain't listening. She ain't seeing the red flags. Good luck, girl. <laughs> the Kia likes Clifton. Uh, you know, they, they stuck on the physical. Like, physically, he looks like a man. Like, a fa like you know, that father they don't have. He looks like that mature uh, figure. But he's just not. Uh, Ace, we don't, I don't really know who she likes. She just likes everybody. She didn't really say it. She kind of like, I don't know. I, I must have missed it. Uh, I assume she likes Laverne, though. Uh, Sabrina likes Demetrius and Donovan. Carmen likes Paul. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, dislikes. Sabrina doesn't like Laverne. Dakia doesn't like Laverne. Christina doesn't like Laverne and <laughs> Tori. We know who's going to be on the chopping block. Carmen doesn't like Laverne. <laughs> Shocker. Uh, Joy doesn't like Tori and Demetrius. She says uh, Tori keeps showing his hurt. See, Tori was showing all this weakness. And that turns everybody off. That turns the women off. So, And he was behaving weird, you know. Uh, so we know who's on the chopping block. It's Tori and Laverne. So they 
decide that Sabrina is going to go on a date with Laverne, tell him yay or nay. And then the Kia is going on a date with Tori, tell him yay or nay. So let's talk about this uh, date with Sabrina and Laverne, shall we? <laughs> so, whew, Laverne shows up. He's already paranoid that the ladies are plotting against them. <laughs> he said, he said this like, I know y'all ladies was plotting against me. It was Sabrina, Carmen, and Christina. They don't want me to be with Ace. And Sabrina was like, What? I ain't said nothing about you. Like, well, no, let's let's go back. So when he jumps out his car, he's walking in, he sees her at the bar, she gets up to give him a hug, and he's like elbow and <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> it's like you can't even hug the lady. Like She's like, she's like, oh, uh, trying to, she's like, oh, okay, all right, yeah. I mean, all right, Laverne, he was acting, he was acting crazy on this one, but he's really agitated already. He's already in the defensive, you know, because he's like, I heard y'all was, y'all was conspiring against me. Y'all plotting against me, like, <laughs> like he's Julius Caesar. I don't know, <laughs> like, but anyway, uh, he comes in. And I swear to God, he is coming coming in looking like Suge Knight. I mean, that's why he had that energy. He got on the red, he got on the red top, the red sweatshirt, the hoodie. Uh, it's got Ace on it in black. It's got an Ace of Spades on that mug. He got the beard, the bald. <laughs> you know, he looking just like a low budget uh, Suge Knight. Uh, <laughs> but so, and Sabrina's like. Oh boy, please! You ain't even worth talking about in private. Like, why? Why would your name even come out of my mouth? And they get into a little argument. She leaves. She's like, you know what? I had it with this clown. <laughs> He's like, well, often, and you know, y'all. That's what y'all get. You know, I'm just gonna just tell me I ain't ready to love. I know that's what you called me here for. <laughs> so, she's like, you need to get over yourself. You're a, a petty little spiteful man, and. That was it. He's gone. <laughs> he out of there. So, of course, the kid and Tori, they, you know, Tori was in good spirits. He probably knew he was on. He was about to be let go. Um, but the kid told him, you know, you're not ready to go home yet. And he was happy about that, you know. And she was like, you know, since he wasn't acting weak and he wasn't tripping, he wasn't saying, oh, you know, all this pettiness. Like, he started to look attractive to her because she never really seen him in that light before. She didn't see nothing about him that made her want to know more about him. And in that light, she was like, you know, I'm kind of feeling him. Like, he looking pretty good over there. Like, you know, I think I can probably give him a try. So, that was it for this uh, episode. Um, I don't know. It, this episode was the only thing I got to kick off was watching uh, how... <laughs> Clifton has fallen from this mighty giant to a pathetic, insecure man. I mean, I was really surprised, shocked. Um, I was like in disbelief of how he was acting, especially towards these exes. You know, these exes ain't got nothing to do with you. They ain't have nothing to do with this whole thing. They just happen to be in this woman's past and everybody got a past and he was giving them the business like they just they just people like you somebody ex like if, if you had this this assignment and you still care about your ex and you you still love her and you still want to see her do good and you there for nothing but good like let it go like i don't i don't see the the whole thing with uh why he was tripping so hard i mean he must have he must have been doing some shady stuff when he was with somebody at, or when he was an ex you know what I'm saying? He might have been that stalker ex dude. But all right, so that's it for my review of Ready to Love, season five or six, episode seven, The X Files. Uh, catch me next week when we do episode eight. And I'm out. Peace.